This episode of A Conversation with John Conenna is sponsored by Generate. In today's digital age, staying ahead means harnessing the power of generative AI. Wondering how your small or medium-sized business can join this revolution? Look no further than Generate, your strategic partner for integrating cutting-edge generative AI solutions. We create personalized plans, adapting existing AI technologies to fit your specific business needs. Plus, our expert team provides essential training, empowering you to make the most of these innovative technologies. Interested in transforming your business with AI? Reach out to us at generateteam at gmail.com. That's generate, G-E-N-E-R-A-I-T, team at gmail.com. And now, on with the episode. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of A Conversation with John Canena. Today, it brings me great, great pleasure to bring in a young, vibrant, young coach here in Illinois, Nicholas Rocco, who is now entering his sixth or seventh season with the Lewis University men's basketball team. Um, Nick has brought a lot to the table here in a short time, which we're going to go over. But again, like I said, I met him a few months back and it just really touched me to see the dedication and the work ethic of a young man. And uh, we want to touch base with this up and coming coach. Nicholas, uh, good afternoon. And uh, what is going on with you, young man? And uh, how does this all get started for you? But first of all, how's it going out, going for you? It's going well. Just got back from Italy. Thanks to, uh, thanks to your business and how you set things up. It was perfection. I can't speak enough about how perfect and organized our trip was so if anybody's looking to go to italy that's the guy right there okay thank you so much Nick. thank you so much i know what a great trip which we'll touch on maybe a little bit later um where do you get the passion did you play the game at a young level and you wanted to stay in it yeah so i man ever since i was my mom saved projects from when I was in like first and second grade um, of me drawing basketball courts and biographies of Michael Jordan um, and Marissa, my wife, I want to hang them up on the walls. And she's like, no, absolutely not. We're not hanging those up. Um, but I, I was infatuated with the sport. Uh, I became just an enthusiast of obviously uh, the bulls back in the day in, in the late eighties and early nineties. And I think growing up, I knew I loved the game. I wanted to play the game as much as I could, as long as I could. And then eventually it just started kind of moving into coaching. Um, and just like organically, like I, I would love sitting at home, holding the clipboard, watching the game and, you know, oh, that, that play looks good. Well, what if I could do this? And I just, it, it was my life. It was so, my life. This is interesting. So what, let's say you were watching this program, uh, the Bulls versus the, the the Bulls versus the Knicks. You would actually follow it even when they were breaking it down and announce or even at a halftime thing, correct? Yeah, yeah. Like I Tex Winter. I mean, and I, oh it, yes. It's a shame a lot of younger guys today, even players, like you say Tex Winter, or they have no idea. Johnny Bach. Oh my God. So I, I just I wanted to see the triangle offense and like, how do they use it with Jordan? And like, I was, I was a huge fan of Phil Jackson. Obviously I know not many people are today, but Phil Jackson and Pat Riley, like I love those guys and Popovich. I love that. He's still coaching today, but I, I think I gravitated towards at a certain point, not players, but more towards coaches and those are the three when I was younger that I could remember watching. Like I loved watching Spurs games. I loved obviously watching Jordan and Phil Jackson. And then when Phil Jackson went to the Lakers, I wanted to see how can they make this triangle offense work with Shaq and Kobe it is. Right. I think that's great. What a great breakdown by you. And I really mean this because, you know, my son Vince, who's a little bit older than you, uh, just a few years older, he used to say to me, dad, you know, Pat Riley, he's got that suit on, he's got the nice yeah. shirt and the tie, and he's got the walk and everything. He says, but look who he's got out there. He's got Magic Johnson, he's got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, James right, right. Worthy, Norm Nixon at the time, at the, the, a little bit before the time, and of course, uh, Brian Scott. He goes, sure, I could wear a suit and coach too. Good? Go, yeah. <laughs> this guy, this guy has designed 
plays around what Johnson and all those guys got to do. You brought up, I mean, tremendous coaches and the battles with Riley and Phil Jackson when Riley went to New York was yeah. amazing. I mean, it was just like tit for tat back and forth. And of course, Papa Butch, a great uh, dad is Nick, really, you're touching me here because I never would have expected this to open up this way. Cause you know, you figure, okay, you're going to zero in on a Michael Jordan. You're going to, you know, Jordan, yeah, yeah, Jordan, yeah. Jordan, Jordan, by the way, what a, day, but... for our audience, what a beautiful display, which we're going to touch on in the end, uh, uh, Nick King and Nick having these unbelievable air Jordans behind him. And, uh, we're going to even put on the light on later. Uh, but I got to tell you, that is amazing because when you're, yeah, again, that youngster, you want to just focus in on that player. But for you to do that, there's already, you're already seeing beyond the game. So this takes you to this level, right? Yeah, I think, I think it goes hand in hand. Like Coach Trost, who, who I currently work with now, his biggest thing is it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And you need really good players to help you look really good as a team and as a coach. Um, but I do think that there's something to a really good coach knows how to handle certain players and, and personalities and kind of mesh them together and um, get them to believe in the X's and the O's that you're trying to push as well as get them to kind of drop an ego and build within the team concept where they can also find a little bit of me um, in some opportunities as well. Your title at Lewis right now is associate coach, correct? Associate Correct. head coach. Correct, yes. That, that, that's, a, that's, a, D, that's another th great thing here you brought up. Uh, I coached hockey for many years here in the state of Illinois. You had to really find what button to push with all these type of players and personalities, correct? It's not like you can just go in there, hey, this is Nick Rocco. We're doing it my way, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, and I think like um, one of the biggest things that I can remember coming up when I was younger and coaching in, in, in high school and AAU basketball is coach ping um, legendary coach ping from St. Joe's. Yes. Big Jean, big Dettori for our audience. Yeah. He would always say actually five years to the day he passed away today, Wow, which is, which is crazy, but he would always say, you gotta be yourself. Don't try and be this coach. Don't try and be me, be yourself. And let the rest just fall into place. And so I think I've always tried to do that. Any new place or team I've coached or new player that has come in, I don't like to throw myself into that team or player. I just sure. always try and like to be myself. And exactly. sometimes that's a loud Italian. Sometimes it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's more, you know, observant and hearing what they have to say first. But I think my personality Everyone has an individual style, and I, I like to gain my players' trust by allowing them to see my personality and then trust in me, and I trust in them, and then you can tell them what to do. Sure. Then, they, then they want to run, run through a wall for you. Where, where did you play in high school? Yeah, yeah I, I played in high school, and then I got to college. I played my first year at Benedictine. Yep. Then at Benedictine, um, Keith Bunkenberg, who was my head coach, great guy, still talk to him today. Um, I had ankle surgery in going into the summer of my sophomore going to be season. And I knew I wasn't going to the NBA, a 5'10 Italian odds are not happening. And uh, I just, I knew I wanted to coach the game. I knew I wanted to be a professional basketball coach. Sure. Sure. And, uh, actually remember talking to coach Bunks and calling him up when off season training was starting. And I said, coach Bunks. I don't know what to do. I, I have a love to play. I have a love for the game from, from a playing aspect, but yeah. I also know this is what I want to do for my future. And I have an opportunity. I think I was 21, maybe. I think I was 21, 2021. 20, I had an opportunity to start coaching um, the high school level at a young age and kind of start at the age of 20. And I, and he said, Nick, Take a week, take a week, stay away from practices, stay away from camps. Let me know at the end of the week. And like, to this day, I tell him like that, that was, 
so cool to him. And, and I'm so grateful because it was during that week, like those first three days, I was going and working out some players um, at a local high school. And it's just like, I knew, like, I, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to make it work. And so, so this was really a great advice. I mean, a constructive advice for you to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that week away, you miss the game, but you kind of have to mature in a sense and understand this is the next process to the game in my life. You know, it, it doesn't mean I can't be active and fit and still play the game. It's just as a competitor on a competitive level, I wanted to coach the game of basketball. Man, wow. Wow. When is your first job as a coach? When is you, when was the first one? I was a freshman basketball coach in 2012, maybe 2011 okay. or 12. One of the two. <laughs> now we're already going back 12 years. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah crazy is right. Yeah. And where was that at? Do you remember? That was at Nazareth Academy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and the program wasn't great. And I looked at it as a great opportunity to prove myself and also re recruit, I know high school recruiting, recruit. um, get some upper echelon talent to come into a high school that isn't well known for its basketball program yes. so i i tried to instead of look at it as well this place isn't really good at basketball sure. doesn't have a reputation I, I try to look at it as like i'm going to make my reputation by showing people here um that people can be better at basketball and come play here so give them that confidence that right say, hey we can do this well of course when you say the word Nazareth, there's that school St. Joe's, which is uh, not too far. Yeah, away. It's right yeah. across the. Yeah, it's pretty close. I know. Yeah. yeah so, like, like, like so how yeah. does a Nicholas Rocco meet a Gene Pignatori? So we've known each other since I was, I mean, fourth grade. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I live in Westchester. I went to every single St. Joe's basketball camp from when I was a little kid. Um, and I just like, it was family. It, you always felt like family. And I think being, uh, obviously he was Italian, but I think there goes, there's something to be said for a program of any level where the culture of family and everybody's got each other's back and there's no, there's no personality that's trying to say, you know, ego, I'm, I'm bigger than you. I'm bigger than you. Right. Right. And, and I feel like that's what was there. And every coach at St. Joe's when I was little, I can remember all their names from freshman to sophomore to varsity. They were all the same, just energetic, loved the game, wanted to make you better. No one put somebody else down on the staff. Everybody got along. Everybody goofed around. Everybody knew your name. Everybody welcomed you in. Um, and I think that happens from the top down, obviously, with Coach Pink. Sure. And so we always kept in touch. I was never a superstar player, but I was a hard worker. Right. And I'd work my ass off to prove someone wrong or go at them physically in the game of basketball. And I'm sure I wasn't going to be a – I mean, they had my, my, my year, they had three or four very big time division one players. We could go into that, but they, they wanted me to come be a part of the team and, and the program of St. Joe's. And that was sure. so alluring. Um, and I ended up not going to high school there. And even so not going to high school there, I still kept in touch with every coach. Wow. Throughout my years in high school, when I got to college, it was one of the St. Joe's coaches who put me in contact with Coach Bunkenberg at Benedictine. And even though I say I never physically went to St. Joe's as a student, uh, my heart was there. And I'm just fortunate I had the chance and opportunity um, after coaching at my first high school stop to, to no-brainer go coach with 
the St. Joe's basketball program and, and Coach Pingator. So basically, did you go in there and say, you know, I'm going to try to get this job and uh, see what we can do? Or they were they rec- or were they looking for coaches at that time when you made the move there? Was it it was 2015, correct? Well, I got there in 2014. 14. OK, I got there in 2014. So how the timeline went, I think it was just a perfect mix. Um the AAU scene back in 2013, I, I was with a ba- I was with the basketball team coaching at the time sophomores in high school, um, and they were really good. I had a lot of really good players that I knew when they got to college would be scholarship type players. And I mean, one of them went to Vanderbilt, one of them went to Illinois, one of them went to Seton Hall, um, one of them went to Colorado State. So at the time, before some other AAU teams, some bigger name AAU teams could come in and, hey, we're sponsored by shoe companies. We're spon- we can give you this. Got it, you got this. it. Yeah, yeah. I kind of found them before all that would happen. So long story short, some of those kids um, in eighth grade that I was trying to get to come to Nazareth Academy, St. Joseph High School was also trying to get them. They're to doing the recruiting, yeah. Yeah. And um, so we would all, he'd say, you know, Rocco, you're trying to get my players. And I'd make a joke. I'm like, Hey, I got to win. We got to win. We need better players. And um, as I got into high school and started coaching high school AAU, I had a couple St. Joe's kids on my team. And so I think, you know, he would come watch some games. Um, Obviously he would probably be in contact with his own players asking him, you know, what's that Rocco guy doing? How is he? And I think it was the summer, the summer of 2013 going in 14, um, coach Ping called me and said, Hey, why don't you come to my office? I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. What, what, I mean, what, I got goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. He said, he said, why don't you come to my office? And I said, when, um, and he said uh, tomorrow at noon. And I said, and I was, I was working a basketball camp at the time for the high school I was at. For Nazareth. Yeah. And I remember, I remember asking my mom and, and, my, and my dad, and I said, you know, he wants to meet. My mom and my dad said, you go meet. You ask if you can leave the camp that you're working a little early, and you go meet. And I went, and I met, and I remember him. He was leaning. He leans back in his chair. He puts his hands like this. I, he goes... You got my, you're trying to coach my players. You're trying to get, you're trying to get them, you're recruiting the same players as me. This kid goes here, this kid goes here. And I laughed and I, and I said, Hey, I, I, I didn't make him leave St. Joe's. Um, you know, I, it was a better situation for the player. I still keep in contact with the player and his dad to this day. Um, and uh, Coach Ping says, How would you like it if you worked a couple camps for me? And I said, I'd, I'd love to uh, name the date. Wow. And he gave me the date to his camp. Um, and so I made my schedule work to where I was doing one camp. And then I would go to the St. Joe's camp. And at the St. Joe's camp, you know, he give me a sheet, what he wants done. Each coach had a station. Sure, sure. Each coach was in charge of something. And um, I would just, I, I worked his camp. And I did the station he gave me, which was defense. And uh, I remember from start to finish, I was just enthralled and happy and uh, sure. energetic to just be there, right? Like you were going to hear this. Coach yeah, here's this legendary coach. You know, yeah. I, I, I want to stop just for one second, Nick. I want to yeah. tell our audience. This is we're we're talking about a coach out of St. Joe's Westchester, which was Gene Pignatori since the days of when I went to Holy Cross when I graduated in the same year as Isaiah Thomas and I think yeah. his name was Tyrone Brewer. These guys would come to Holy Brewer, Cross, yeah. and I I would always look at Isaiah and I go, is he on ice skates? Because yeah. the cutting and the movement was unbelievable. But then we're talking about the great Gene Pignatore. But uh, I have to tell you, Nicholas, I'm the outsider looking in. Of course, I was not part of that seeing that. I wasn't in the room. But if I'm the fly on the wall, this man had a respect for you. Oh, he God. already knew what you were all about. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're there. You're coaching his camp. 
And at the end of the camp, um, he brought me back into uh, his office. And he, again, he sits down and, you know, he leans back in the chair and he goes, and I, he talks with his hand, us Italians, we talk with our hands a lot, you know? So he said, how would you like to come and coach here? And I just said, yeah, I mean, I, it's, that's a no brainer. And so um, I have, I, I, and at the time too, I don't want to say me, but me and a couple families who I coached on the AAU team I was on. Sure. One kid was at St. Ignatius and one kid was at St. Joe's and they had made the decision to come to Nazareth to play basketball and attend school there largely in part because I was. You were the one going after them. Sure. I was on, I was on staff at the time I was a varsity assistant and uh, they thought Nazareth would be great for their education. Um, and then it was just a great fit for them knowing I would watch over their kid and coach them. And I had to call them and tell them I am not going to Naz anymore. I'll, I'll be at St. Joe's, but credit to those families and those kids, they, they verbatim, you got to go. Like we completely wow. understand you have to go. And I felt terrible, right? Like I felt terrible, but knowing that they, the families even said, you got to go like, yeah, you got to go. So that's the story. And then I started coaching at St. Joe's in 2014. Yeah. 2014. And, and, and I have to tell you this, look at this in 15, uh, you, you guys are uh, with the IHSA state, state champion. Uh, and then of course uh, you're the runner up in 16. Almost so not run. too shabby having uh, and of course, uh, not too shabby bringing in Mr. Rocco uh, right away. Things start to get even. Oh uh, no! I, hey, all the credit goes to the the structure Ping had in place. Sure. Well, um, let, me ask, let me ask you this question, Nick, in in regards to that. Now, I graduated high school 1979, and Pigs already was, you know, the god of the day. Okay, yeah. he was already, you know, yeah. you knew who Gene Pig Vittori was. I want to ask you this question. Answer it or tell me, John, go take a hike in the complete <laughs> water. Was Pignatori still as sharp in 14 than he was in 1978? Was he still on top of his game? Yeah, you know, I, I tell people there were days. So, like, you, he worked in the school. It wasn't just he didn't show up at basketball. Yeah, right, right. So he was in school all day, every day, from when school started to when school got out. Uh, he would leave for his lunch oatmeal break. You know, there, there would be a, there would be an oatmeal lunch break, but he would come back, and then he would go to practice, and he would be there for the sophomore practice. Sure. And then he would be there for the varsity practice. And there were days where, I mean, at the time I was 25, 25, 26, and I would be tired. And I'd look at him. And he's still moving. Moving. Never sat down. Never. Never stopped moving. Never stopped talking. Never stopped coaching. Never. There was not one second in a practice. If it was a four to seven or a six to eight or a three to six, there was never a time wow. he sat down to coach. Never. Boy, you talk never. about a mentor right there. Never. Does, of course, then you get on to move on to uh, Lewis. I think it was in, uh, you move on to Lewis about 16, right? 16, 17? Yeah, 17. Yeah, 17, 18. Yeah. Uh, a year, the year. To, how, what took you now to get to this next level, which is the college level? I think something that's in your heart of hearts. But, of course, what a great thing you had with the, the whole thing with St. Joe's. But now, what takes you to this next level for our audience? So, obviously, the success at St. Joe's helped a lot and being around really good people and some good players. And then I was still coaching my AAU team. Um, at the time it was Chicago lockdown. And before the AAU landscape kind of changed around 2020 lockdown was known as well, could still be known um, a really good hard nose, blue collar um, undervalued type of player in that program. And we would go out and we would beat shoe sponsored teams. I won't name any, but we would beat shoe sponsored teams. Um, 
that have players that are highly recruited that are going to big time schools. Sure. And, you know, we had some players that were being recruited to scholarship schools, but obviously there was a, there was a talent discrepancy, a size discrepancy, and we'd go out and we'd handle our business. And I think with the combination of that great program that Joe Nego had put together, um, and then the combination of, I think, years of basketball training through the Chicagoland area. Sure. Um, I got to train players from high schools across Chicagoland. And then obviously being at St. Joe's, um, I had some opportunities and Lewis to me, I'm a, I'm a big family guy. Obviously Lewis is in Chicagoland. It's close to home. To me, it was a no brainer to start my next step and opportunity as, as hard as it was to leave coach Ping and St. Joe's, um, you know, and then we had that talk with Ping and Ping said, Rocky, if you have this opportunity, you know, if you feel this is the right time, then you need to go. Uh, he, oh, but I'll what a be, great thing for, instead of be argumentative, he was, he wants oh you, God. Yeah, he oh wants you to succeed. He oh wants my God. To, yeah. It, 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 and you know what, like, I won't get into this story in too much detail. When I was leaving Nazareth, and I, I went to Nazareth. I attended Nazareth as a student. So, like, it had some affinity to me, right? The guy that was there then, um, I remember having a conversation with him. It wasn't easy. Like, hey, I'm leaving Nazareth sure. to St. Joe's. And it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. It wasn't very supportive. Um, and I remember having the same type of maybe worry when I went to go talk to Ping. Um, and... I was a fool for thinking that it, it was, I mean, he told me, he goes, if anything happens, I'll be here for you. You come back. Yeah, like it was just, it was amazing. Wow. Like, was, what was amazing. leaving, you know, that proverbial door open, you know? Yeah. That, yeah. 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 That, and, that, and, and, knowing, and knowing I could always call him hell throughout my first two years there, me and the other assistant coach who was a St. Joe's coach. Sure. He'd go back and we'd call him. We'd show up in his office. We'd say, Hey, we got to talk to you. Here's an opinion. What, what do you think? It was, no, it was amazing. Yeah, was and, amazing. and again, I love the way you started this off today. Like you said, you said this whole thing was family. It's not yeah. like Pig, Pig Notori was this type of guy who goes, hey, we're doing it my way. Rock yeah, no. yeah. No. bring your suit tonight like Pat Riley and don't worry about it, you know. Well, he, he did make us wear suits, which I had no problem with. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. I, I had yeah, I was I was known as the guy that had new suits every game. That was fine with me. But hey, Nick, I can see you in the Riley yeah, moment. I love oh, the yeah. suits. I, I, I don't like now how we don't wear suits. I got a closet full of suits. I don't know what to do with them. I know. I I, I miss that. You know, it just, I mean, the whole thing I see even, well, the NBA coaches now the way. Yeah, no more suits. What has been the forte for you at Lewis? What are you known for now at Lewis? I mean, again, here, I'm just looking at this. Uh, when you get to Lewis, uh, you guys were the number one seed, uh, uh, the NCAA D2 uh, region. And then, of course, the 2001 GLBC Conference Champions. Um, yeah. 2022, the Eastern Division champion. You were the runner-up this past year. Uh, and yeah, the, we almost had, almost had another one. Yeah. yeah, I know, but I mean, what? I mean, things again are like a machine here are, are going well. What has been your forte now going to this level? What does Nicholas Rocco, as this associate head coach, bring to the table? You know, I think credit to Coach Trost. He had another championship before I got there in 2016 so they, he had won a championship in 2016 um he so he knows how to win a championship he knows how sure. to win um but i think again i went into it with the advice that Payne gave me and that was be myself what comes organically and it will naturally happen and I think I came into my first year, um, didn't want to, I'm the new guy again, right? I'm not trying to, I know people can perceive like, oh, that guy is coming to take my spot or that guy is, right. wow. you know, and I think eventually Coach Trost and myself, like we just kind of meshed really, really well. Um, he gave me a lot of autonomy to make decisions in training whether if it was skills in, in weight training, how I wanted to set that program up in off season training, um, preseason training, sure. 
different drills that we'll talk and discuss together. Um, you know, game planning, just going back and forth. And right, not, not everything I say is probably right. We're going to sound intelligent. And um, I just, you can't have that fear to kind of like be yourself and say it um, and also hear back like, well, that's not going to work or that's a good idea. We may look into that. Like, I just think it, I think a, a really good relationship formed and there's trust. And I think in any good relationship, trust is a, you know, a foundational piece Sure. In a, in the family of a coaching staff or the the family of a team aspect, um, and so I just always did in my mind what I've been doing, and you know, focus on defense, focus on details, focus on habits. Sure. Um, and I think I kind of maybe uh, pride myself on being an extension of the head coach, you know, at the time it's coach Trost and the message he wants and needs to get across to his players. Sure. Um, I have to be that messenger. And there's times where maybe, you know, players don't want to hear it from or how it's said. Right. And you kind of got to like bridge a gap and get them. Cause to they see. could be shutting him out and you right. can. Yeah, exactly. You know, everybody needs to be on the same page and have one common goal. Um, so I think uh, the player, the, the player whisperer, maybe so to speak of, of, Hey, this is what we're trying to say, do it this way. Um, and you're going to succeed in, 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 in layman's terms. And I think that's worked out well for us, uh, and uh, the relationship I have with Coach Trost, I think, like, I think it's invaluable. Like, any staff, any staff where you feel comfortable going in every day, where you can goof around with somebody, where you can, you can say, hey, we, we, we screwed up here, or, or hey, we got to do this a little different, or, hey, I think this was really good, or that was such sure. a great idea. Like, I think that, that's what brings success. Again, the cliche that family atmosphere. I think it's just, it's something I try and take with me and do. And I think that's what brings success in the end. You know, beautifully said, because I love the way you said this. This is how I'm going to interpret this. You said the word trust, which is huge in anything. It's just like um, my son and my daughter, your, your family. If something's going wrong with mom and dad, you sense it. You know, yeah, yeah. you yeah. feel it. And yeah. it's just like the team concept. If yeah. things are not going along with you and Tross, players know. Sense it. They players feel it. Know. So, yeah. Nick, before I go on to something else, how big is the preparation as we now get closer and closer? When does the season start in October? Um, officially for us, we go a week after our players move in. So, like August 18th. Wow. So, the yeah. preparation is it's moving yeah you look you look back on some things in the summer that okay we need we need this player we need this player we got to piece this guy here you know from a recruiting aspect and then you kind of go into this offensively really worked well for us what can we do to help better suit this player on our team sure. now you know defensively we got to get better here this guy's got to get better what can we do heading into mini camp to get that to get that rolling exactly um, so, yeah. I mean, so many moving pieces that this, the game, the structure, the experience, everything. And then, of course, the big word of the player, the personality now that you have to deal with in putting this puzzle together. The pieces, the pieces. Yeah. Incredible. I have to mention something, and if you could break this down for me. You yeah. were all, you served as a head coach and skills trainer for the Chicago Lockdown. Uh, yeah. uh, with there, and uh what uh, the 17 U team advanced to three final fours? Uh, was it yeah. the yeah, uh, w under your direction? Tell us just a little bit about that. That had to be you had to be so proud of that, too. Yeah, I wish they were championships, but you know, yeah. <laughs> but I get yeah. you know, yeah, it's fun, it's fun because at the time, again, AU landscapes changed a bit, so there was something called NY2LA, it's still around, um, but there's just other now branches of AAU games. So it, a ton of teams would come in and talk in hundreds um, and it would be a huge bracket on the wall and everybody would go look and see where you're seated. 
and you don't really have much time to game plan because it's AAU. You kind of just you go off the habits that you instill and 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 the, and the skills and the players that you have. Um, and uh, no, that was a fun time, and it was just again. I'm, I think every coach is a competitor, and I, I would hope every player is a competitor. Right. Some days less 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 than others, but you go in every game and you want to make a name for your team because you're the underdog and you're not the team that's sponsored by Nike. You're not sponsored by Adidas. You're not sponsored by Under Armour. You don't get all these shoes and free. Sure. So um, I kind of like let my passion be shown into my players and they want to, they want to walk on coals for me. They want to, they want to run through walls, but it's because they want to compete too. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to these big tournaments, you're going to these big time tournaments and you know, you, you're in like a, a sweet 16 scenario and you're playing a team that's sponsored by Adidas and you walk in and you, you pump your guys up and you let them know uh, that this is the moment, you know, this is the moment of proving people wrong and to take advantage of proving yourself right. Um, and they go out there and it's just like, you can't knock them over they're, The adrenaline's rushing too much and, and they're based off the habits and skills that they've learned at practice. So you you see these big time athletes chasing sure. around guys and they're looking at each other and then they start arguing and then their coach starts yelling. And once you see that, uh, that, that team kind of drift and fall apart, you know, okay, uh, here we go. And so, yeah. Nick, I got to ask you because my era, your era, uh, all these different eras, which we can never compare do you find when you're preparing now, let's say this August team and everything else, practices, meetings, whatever it's called now, uh, video uh, of different teams, and you're breaking down something, do you see when those players are, you, you feel the respect from those players or you sometimes feel like, hmm, like you get that attitude sometimes from a player as, ah, rock on trust, they don't know what they're doing. Or do you get, <laughs> do you, do you see do you see the respect factor? You feel it. I mean, I think there's always a sliver of doubt from, from, from a player that's like, maybe we should guard this guy this way. Maybe we should attack this team this way. But I think if you um, cultivate a open communicated environment in a film session where a player can give their opinion Sure. You, they trust you that you're going to listen to their opinion and even value it, right? Like that may not be a bad idea. Let's do that. Um, there's a balance and, you know, some guys may disagree with the final decision. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think nowadays players have more voice and they have more power um it's definitely a different animal for sure yeah it's different it's different and obviously like coach Trost has been doing it for a long time and so I like to learn and remember the differences that he talks about from when sure. he was doing it 5 10 15 years ago and try and see the trend and change uh and 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 insert myself and see how can I make this change smooth to where we can kind of keep it to where these guys got to understand at the end of the day, you got to play your ass off. You got to play hard. You got to play, you got to play with like coach Tro says with every fiber of your being. It's just, you got to be tough. You got to be tough. Um, and be I tough. think nowadays, I guess there's no knock on, on current players. I just think the way people are maybe wired today is you got to be a little tougher than you were as a player maybe now I think they don't expect things to be as hard sure and I think that's got a lot to do with this oh yeah social media um yeah and I think it's got a lot to do with you know parents being on social media and maybe some trainers sure. that are that are always preaching to their kid or, or or player like you're a star you're great you're good and that's great like a kid could be really good right but I mean, I, Phil Jackson is one of the greatest coaches in, in my opinion, but I'm sure he still had flaws, okay. you know, Jordan still had flaws. Um, so you could be a good player and still have flaws. Uh, but I think today people are shocked when they're told 
hey, you don't have a left hand. Let's work on your ability to go left and shoot jumpers off the left. Or, right. Or, you're not a really good passer. We need to work on your ball handling. You know, sometimes people look at you like, I'm not a good passer. What? You don't? Yeah. And it's just like, there is a difference. There is a difference. You And of course, as the coach, you see it. Let me tell you something. I'm going to stop this just for a minute to say this. We are visiting with Nicholas Rocco, the associate head coach at Lewis University. And I have to tell you, Nick, I didn't think it was going to go this way. But your preparation for the game has really, like, wowed me today. I really mean this. This is fantastic. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't think I was going to have to say this after this. I really would like to do a part two with you because preparation and what you're talking about the athlete of today and how this game is played because this game has changed tremendously just after our famous COVID this game has changed I just see it every day and I, I can imagine what you see yeah. listen we're going to play a thing of five questions we're going to talk about that back wall and then there is something I have to say about you at the end so let's get into this five questions and see oh. how you handle them these could be right. tough you know that's, you that's may, Marissa may lock the key out tonight <laughs> All right. <laughs> Besides your parents, yeah, good one. And uh, let's say a well. I think I know the answer. Who was really that early mentor in your career that you still talk about to this day? Oh, Coach Ping. Again, I knew I figured I, that was going to be the answer. Yeah, sure. uh, it was just again to go back to him, and I don't mind going back to him. Um, I'm sure when he passed, that had to be a really sad day for you. Yeah, it was. It was a sad day for everybody. Yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, he 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 was gone too soon. He yeah. was gone too soon. He would have okay. kept. Going. He would he would have been just as sharp. He would have been yeah. just as sharp. Uh, an everlasting impression for Nicholas Rocco, and I'll tell you, I, I would have loved to been in that office to see when he said, you know, when he said, there, down. "There's players when when I was still at St. Joe's. There's players from 20, 30 years ago that would still come back and hang out and watch his practices. To me. That says it. That's the ultimate. That is the ultimate. Yeah. Question question two, a little bit lighter, but let's see what, you, what your answer is. What's your favorite movie of all time that you could watch 200 times and not get bored? God. Um, you can give me one or two. I'm not a big movie guy. And okay. Marissa, Marissa hates me for this. But anything with Mark Wahlberg, okay. I, I will watch. Um, and Will Ferrell. Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell are, are, are some of my top two guys. So you must like when he was the elf of Will Ferrell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love it when he's dancing on the pool table, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What is the Nicholas Rocco go-to meal, whether, whether if you got to go to a restaurant or uh, maybe something mom made or maybe now the new Marissa made? What Marissa's What's the go-to meal? Marissa's going to laugh at this because all I eat is chicken and rice. But so the, the go-to meal... If I'm if I'm home and I'm healthy is chicken and rice and an avocado. That's the go-to. Okay. If I'm if I'm cheating a little bit on some food and eating a little unhealthy, uh, my weakness is nachos. I, I okay I have, okay. All right, you're in great shape, so keep eating the nachos. I, I, yeah, you know it's yeah, and sparingly the nachos sparingly. sparingly. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go back to basketball now. If Nicholas Rocco was that. Uh, coach of a game seven NBA team, okay. Nicholas Rocco is the head coach. Which someday I think we're going to see this because you're going to hear it on this podcast first. If you're this uh, head coach, it's game seven, two minutes left. Who's your starting five and who's your sixth man coming off the bench? You have one minute to answer this question. Who are your starting five, two guards, center, two forwards, and the sixth man coming off the bench? It could be somebody from the past, somebody now. Yeah. Go ahead, Nicholas Rocco. You have 59 seconds. Shaq's my center. Kevin Durant's my four man. I'm taking Jordan as my three, Kobe as my two, and then give me Jason Kidd as my one. Oh, wow. What a surprise. You, 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 you'd go with the Jason Kidd. Got to facilitate. Got to get, gotta okay. get the guys in the right spots. Nicholas Rocco never stops coaching. Yeah, yeah no, I, boom, do it. I, boy, that Nick. Great answer, and I hope you love that question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would never expect the Jason Kidd, you know? Yeah, uh, underrated, underrated player. Yes, w big time, big time. All right, last question before I say something about you, and we're going to talk about that wall behind you. What's in the future for Nick Rocco, Nicholas Rocco? Where, 
where does he see himself? Let's say five, 10 years from now. Uh, I know you're loving Lewis right now. Everything is going well, but what is that main goal that uh, still is good? He wants to capture. You know, I think as I've gotten older, um, I've taken more of an approach of stop worrying about where you want to be okay, and be where your feet are, which is hard to do, um, especially in probably sports, but in, in the business of coaching. And I think my brother just sent me a text the other night of a, of a Brad on not uh, Stevens, Brad Stevens quote. He was a uh, coach at Butler, used to be the coach of the Celtics. Now he's one of the okay. GM. It was more along the lines of people are so um, eager and worried about chasing a championship, right? And what if my championship is coaching at this school? I want to be here. Um, and they should be focused on doing the best they can uh, at whatever they're doing. And along the lines, learning your way, and hopefully in the end, you achieve that goal or become better for achieving it. And like it just, it hit me. It was, it's just, so I can't say I want to be at X school in five to 10 years, but what I can tell you is I'd love to be a, uh, a successful coach um, and win and win some more championships, but be able to impact lives on a on a greater scale that's my if i want to be five to ten to fifteen years from now i want to be able to to coach and be in a position to achieve some championships and impact a lot a lot more lives on on a greater scale that is i mean just again perfectly said i mean what a thing coming from you know a man of your age and of course and what you've accomplished so far with this coaching is tremendous i gotta tell you something we talked about who your mentor was going to be well when i was doing the research on you i just want you to know that coach nicholas rocco has mentored players during his career over 20 of them have received collegiate scholarships to schools including northwestern drake nebraska Illinois, USC, Colorado State, Holy Cross, Vanderbilt, West Texas, and Indiana. Nick, that is what a huge accomplishment. And as I always leave my guests, don't stop doing what you're doing. This is fantastic. This, I, I, I just loved how you base this on preparation, family, camaraderie, coaching, and looking out for the athlete. This was tremendous. I truly thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. And I got to ask you now. So let's just tell our audience here. You got two minutes. What's going on with this beautiful wall behind you? So my wife doesn't like it. And she does secretly. I think she does. Marissa. So I've got about 75 pairs of Jordan shoes. Oh, fantastic. That I've never worn. I've never worn. So I take my favorite ones and I put them on the wall here. I have like a shrine to Jordan here in this little corner. Oh my God. Oh, I love that. I remember that poster. Wow. And, and at night you could throw the lights on in all the boxes. Fantastic. And, you know, just illuminate the room full of Jordan shoes. Yeah. So, you know, and I was going to tease you earlier. So the 23 is not for LeBron. No, 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 no. 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 It's not not for LeBron. That's not for LeBron. Listen, Nick, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I do really mean this. Um, you kind of steered this, but steered it in a great way today in a sense. But I got to tell you, let's do a part two, maybe during maybe the Christmas break of the season when you might have some time, because I know now this is going to really uh, ramp up again. It's I truly think. Hopefully we'll do part two with another trophy. You got it. I would love that. We have been visiting today with uh, Coach Nicholas Rocco from Lewis University, a tremendous young, vibrant young man. And uh, please catch this on YouTube and Spotify in the next two coming days. I truly thank you. And Nick, have a great season and best to your family. Thank you. See you, John. Okay, buddy. On sale now at Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble stores. The Twins, A Journey of a Lifetime. The brothers and authors, Tony and Carl Ruzica, take us through a journey of Chicago sports history and their memories of a bygone era. Purchase your copy today.